Hey guys, my name is Suzanne Grandy. I am a certified master groomer, a certified canine esthetician, and I am fear free certified. And I am here with Rio. He is a Chinese crested, he's a hairy hairless, and we are going to get him trimmed baby smooth. Right, buddy? Get this lowered down just a little bit so you guys can see his cute self better. All right, you ready? So we're gonna start with washing him and conditioning him and then we will get him blow dried and clippered. Hi guys, hi Debbie, hi organic gal, Yvonne, Lisa. He's a handsome man. He's a man. Let the water warm up. Hi, Bree. Hi, Jody. And Marcel. Hi. Hi, Carrie. Debbie. Yes, he is Harry. Oh, boy. So we're going to make him as smooth as a baby's bottom. I'm going to soap them up twice, once with an antibacterial shampoo, and then once again with squalling care from eye groom for his mane and tail and feet to make them really silky. And flowy. Good boy. I believe it's next week we will be show grooming a puppy Chinese crested and that's going to be fun too I think that is during the off hours as well aside from our regular live stream so I'll be sure to record that one too all right let's rinse this off
So Rio is an AKC Grand Champion. He's also got his Fast Cat title and his Coursing Ability title. And his mom said he's going to be starting on scent work. So he does all kinds of fun stuff. I know he's done dock diving as well, which is fun. So his mom keeps him busy. Right, Rio? Yeah, your mom will keep you busy. I've been grooming him since he was a puppy. weird having two cameras going. I don't know which one I'm looking at. <laughs> and Greta, if you're watching, I love your tri tripod. It's awesome. I need to know the brand. It's probably got it on it. Because I could use a new one. That one's nice. Good boy. So there's a pretty significant difference between the Hairy Hairless and the Powder Puff Cresteds. The Hairy Hairless don't grow as much hair on the body. While they do have hair on the body, you know, they don't grow, it doesn't grow the same as a Powder Puff does. And it's a different texture. Thank you for the link, Greta. Greatly appreciated. You know how it is when you buy stuff, it's trial and error unless you actually have your hands on something that's great. You know? So on 
a dog like him, I do bathe before I clipper because I'm shaving him down with a 40 blade. I want his skin to be really, really clean before I do that. I'm amazed I have my older iPhone with the live stream and my newer iPhone with the video. The difference in the quality of what I see in the picture between the two, it's like holy cow, there's no comparison. It's amazing how much they improve these cameras year to year. So I'm making sure to rinse the conditioner super, super good. I don't want any traces of conditioner left in him. think it's easy to rinse a dog that doesn't have that much hair but honestly guys you have to rinse a dog that doesn't have that much hair as long or longer than your long coated dog because it it doesn't rinse as quickly as you think it would that's a common mistake made with rinsing shampoos off shorter hair dogs you think it's going to rinse super fast, and it doesn't. Kind of adheres to the skin a little bit. guys here I think where am I gonna put you guys I guess right there straighten you out a little bit. You're a little crooked. <laughs> Say hi, Rio. <laughs> this 
Gary Dreyer's gone. <laughs> He's like, I don't like that thing. I don't like it. I don't like that blow dryer. Yeah. See, it's all gone. Poor boy. All right, first thing I'm gonna start working on is his head because Rio grows an overabundance of hair and it detracts from his beauty. Well, you would think a mane on these dogs is something precious to keep. It's not. <laughs> so we're going to start working on this to um, help him be more comfortable and make him more attractive. So to start on that, I'm gonna start working on it pretty much right where it lays. And I want to, the reason why I'm starting here is because I'm going to be tweaking it through the whole groom so that I can get it to where I want it in the end. But I want him to look really, really good without, you know, anything in his hair to help keep it out of his face. So I'm taking, um, Thinning shears with teeth on both sides. These hardly take out any hair. And I'm just going to start coming in and just kind of skimming out of here. Just a little at a time, trying to keep it really, really natural. And you can hand strip this out too, but he's got you know, a heavy coat up here, and that's a lot to strip out. If you were doing it every day or two, you know, if you see a hair out of place, just gently taking it out, you can do that, and it will come out, but it's just a lot all at once for him, and that's why I'm using the thinning shears. To do that, you really just do a couple at a time here and there when you see it. So basically the hair over their eyes should look like a veil, not a covering. But it shouldn't look trimmed either. So I'm just going to let that be. Do his nails. Get all the upsetting stuff out of the way. And then every time his head drops down and I see something coming forward, I'm just going to grab that. You're all right, Rio. Let me see. Looks like your mom's done your nails very recently. Oh my goodness. Well, pay attention to where your feet are then. I like to let a dog be responsible for their own feet. I'm not going to save them. If they step a foot off the table, they're going to look back and say, oh crap. And they're going to look at their back end and they're going to reposition themselves to the center of the table. Let them be responsible for themselves. Right? Good boy. Good boy. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Let's see what we got here. Starting to look more like a veil. So you notice it's just a swipe here and a swipe there. Here a swipe, there a swipe, everywhere a swipe, swipe. 
Next, we're going to do the pads of his feet. Stand. Being careful not to cut off too much here off the back of the pad or going up the foot at all. Good boy, turn. Turn, 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 turn. So you know, different breeds of dogs literally have different hair follicles. How the follicle is shaped, how it grows, how deep it is, and different breeds of dogs have different thicknesses of skin. This breed has one of the most shallow hair follicles of all the breeds of dogs. And they have the thickest skin, if I remember correctly. Of course, don't quote me on that. Always do your own homework. I'm just going off of memory here. So, I'm using a 40 blade. I'm going to use my clipper on low speed so it doesn't heat up as fast. And I have an additional 40 blade to switch off on when this one starts to get warm. I'm going to start where his natural hairline is, going from the long hair to the short hair. Against the brain. Constantly checking the blade on the part of your arm that's very sensitive, like you would a baby's bottle. And you never want it to get any warmer than a baby's bottle would be. It's important to keep the blade flat on the skin, not tilted in at all, or you might scrape the skin. You want to have a really light touch on your clipper, holding it with the looseness of holding a pencil. Good boy, yes, that's all your hair. Look at all that stuff. Now I have two 40 blades. Move you guys over here a little bit. And as both 40 blades are used up, 
and getting warm, I'm going to switch to doing some trimming and then I'll go back and use my 40 blades some more. So I actually have a little bit of a strategy here on how I go about this. It's important to keep the skin stretched as you move in the more sensitive areas like the flank. So I'm literally rolling the skin up to flatten the flank. This is a real easy area to nick if you're not careful. blades cool. It's one thing nice about these magnet strips. If you put your blades on them flat, it'll cool them really quickly. So I'm looking at his head dropping down now. Not as much hair is getting in his face, so that's good. While those 40 blades are cooling, I do the neck and the cheeks against the grain with the 15 instead of the 40. So I'm gonna come all up through here with the 15. It's a more sensitive area. Come here, buddy. No, come here. Hold all this hair out of the way. So I'm coming from just behind the corner of the eye back here, stretching his lip back, clean out along the lips. I do go back over the face with a 40 after I clean it off with the 15. I leave a bit of a point coming down in between the stop here. I'm 
I still have a 15 on the clipper right now for these sensitive areas. So you see when he's just standing here like this now, how the front of that head is starting to look more like a veil instead of like just hanging in his face. And of course, if you do trim it and you have a show coming up, you wanna let it natural out a week or two. If you do that so that it just kind of flows down with a very natural appearance kind of hard to go into that much hair and not like make it look at least a little trimmed but you can try just by using your thinning shears and just going in a little at a time that's why it's best to do if you have the ability to go in and just do maybe once a week or once every three days check it especially during show season once it gets to this point, then you can start hand stripping off some of these sprigs just to give it a really natural flow there. All right, sir, you're looking moth eaten, aren't you? Hmm? You looking moth eaten? He's a good boy. Oh, he's a good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. Aren't you? Yeah. Poppy, see all the blow dries all over. You don't have to be mad at me no more. Let's see how these blades are doing. Oh yeah, nice and cool. So the Chinese crested, their mane should start above their shoulder line. So his shoulders are right here. As you can see, his mane is up here. You want to enhance that when you're trimming. It's a fault that can be penalized if their mane falls too low down below their shoulder, shoulder blades. So this is another easy area to nick. I'm rolling it out with my fingers. Rolling the elbow around. Getting the hair that would fall on the elbow from the outside of the leg. Getting up in here and stretching the skin way up. Rolling this around. 
down. You gotta have a super light touch. Rolling this around. Stretching it up. And pay attention to the way that the hair grows. So you're going to have an area here where against the grain will be going down. Going to have an area here where it's coming around. For me, when I get up under the arms, I like to lift the dog up, get them from under here, so I can see what I'm doing. So at first I was just bulking off the hair. Now I'm actually trying to get in tight. And I actually do not like my 4-in-1 or 5-in-1 clippers for this purpose because the teeth are built differently and the teeth will catch skin. Many of you had noticed for a while there I was only using my 4-in-1 and 5-in-1 clippers and the use of the 40 blades and a couple of other blades that I really like were the main reason for going back to a standard clipper because look at these teeth on this 40 blade right see how close together they are now 5-in-1 40 blade See the, stay. see the difference in the teeth? You can see how easy it would be for skin to feed into this, right? That's why I went back to my old style clippers. I am going to, since he likes to face this way, I am going to put this here, which means I need to move my lighting. Hold on. This might be in y'all's face, but I need it for this. I should put you guys like so. That's still going to bother you. Oh. Hold on. Let me figure this out real quick. <laughs> I don't want this light to bother you guys. Uh -huh. That might work. No. Too dark. It's not gonna work. Let me put it back. You're just gonna have to face the other way, buddy. You're gonna have to face the other direction. I 
know, but I didn't want all that bright light in y'all's eyes. That wouldn't be nice, would it? All right. <laughs> What's happening? What is that? Huh? All right. So one thing, when you have dips, like say between these bones or on the inside of the leg right here, you'll have like a tendon, you'll have a dip in. You want to either move that skin to a more solid area or pull it upward so that you can get in the dip from a different area. So, for this knobby, bony dip here, I don't want to stick my clipper in there and carve it out. I want to roll the skin up and around and kind of pull it up into the muscle so that I can clip it there. So I have the cushion of the muscle for my clipper to go on. Honestly, no matter how much you work on these guys, when you get them out in the sunlight, you're going to see a hair somewhere that you missed. And that's normal. So you just keep picking over it. Every time you see a hair, you find it and you get rid of it. Here again, we have this bony area, rolling it over to the muscle. give that a break again. You got a stand but so with the feet I don't really like them to look trimmed but you don't want them big and floppy like this and looking like snowshoes coming out but you don't want them to look scissored and trimmed either. So I'm using thinning shears and I'm going to pull this hair down below 
and I'm coming straight across the front of the foot from underneath. You notice I'm not rounding the foot. I'm coming from the front of the foot. I'm just getting the bulk off right now and I'm gonna come back in and do more with a more careful shear. Getting y'all's way, but I gotta move this. There we go. I'm going to take my regular thinning shears. I'm just going to come up in here just a bit, a little at a time. Trying to get rid of some of the heaviness. Personally, especially on this really heavy hair, I don't want it to look clipped across. I don't want to see a line of any sort, but it's hard when you're clipping against the grain and you're going from the short hair to the long hair to not create a line. So, it's a new video, Dottie. So, I'm going to take my thinning shears and very carefully I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start transitioning from the shaved area into the hairy area so that you can't tell that it's a blunt line. And I also don't want it to look cut. It's got to be really subtle. One thing I like, I want to show angulation on the back end, but I don't want to cut it up kind of like I did the powder puff on this because I want it to flow out. But at the same time, when the dog's moving away from me, I want to see his feet kick up and I'd like to see his pads. And if you got this hair falling over it, you're not going to really see, and this dog has beautiful movement, but you're not going to really see these feet kick up like you want to. So what I would do is come up under here and take just a bit out up under here because I want to have a little bit of kick up on these legs and I want to see the feet from below on the back. And when they have this much hair, 
you can see from this angle, the dog kind of looks like he might be towing out or he looks like he might, you know, have more of a narrow rear than he does. So you want to think movement if you're being more precise about your grooming and see how this is coming out. That makes it look almost like there's, you can't tell if his feet are going straight forward, right? So you got to look at all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to just come up under, take a little bit out from there. So I still have that flare out around the foot without him looking like he's towing out. And that's one of the things I love about having the cameras at different angles because I have my mirror, a camera, and a camera. And I can see from different angles. So even if I wasn't filming, sometimes those additional angles can really help you look at what you're doing. So now we still have a natural flow on the outside of the foot, but he's still got too much in here. So I'm just going to come down this way and skim off in here. So that when he's moving away from a judge, if he were being shown, he would have a rear that's doing what it should without hair. hiding his quality from a, from a judge. You gotta think about it when the wind's blowing too, right? So look at the difference between the two feet. So this one still looks natural, still flares out nicely, but you don't have this coming out here, you don't have this coming in here, right? That's what I'm looking for. Going to natural it out from the top. Nice transition. up under. Gonna keep, so you can see here when he kicks up, see that nice pad? Now see here when he kicks up how it's kind of hidden. I want to I want to be able to see that pad from behind. Which is going to accentuate his hocks. When you do this, you want thinning shears that are going to glide off the hair. If you notice when you work with certain thinning shears and blending shears, they catch and hold the hair. You really want something that's just going to skim off. All thinning and blending shears are not created equal.
and we're trying to get messy, not perfect. You know, grooming to achieve a natural look is harder than grooming to get a scissored look. It's so easy to just scissor something. So I'm doing the same for the front end. Stop it, buddy. You're fine. Stand up, act like a man. There we go. All right, so from the front end, we don't want them towing in or towing out. And we don't want so much hair in between his front feet that it makes him look like he's got a narrow front. I'm just skimming down in between here, taking a little bit of that hair out. Because if not, when he moves, all this is going to be flopping in the way. If you didn't have such a heavy coat, all this work wouldn't be necessary, but he does have a heavy coat. All right, buddy, we're going to do some more clipper work. to his tail. So typically I take about a third. Not even quite a third of the natural tail, not the hair included. I'd say it's more of a quarter. So when you're getting in this area between the tendons, take your finger from the outside, poke it through, and push that area out flat.
going to work on his ears. Bring this up closer to. See, I'm going to bring this one looking down on him. Just one second. There we go. So I'm going to use a 15 on the bulk of the ear to begin with. Coming center down to the end, center out, and center out, using my fingers to hold the ear steady, and then using my finger as a guide, rolling it up towards the edge of the ear. And you have a little front flap here on the ear that rolls over. You want to straighten that out before you take your clipper up in there. Same when you come from this side, you want to take your fingers and push that area that's folding backwards forward, flatten it. Because if you don't, that's what can catch in the clipper. Then on this part of the ear too, you've got this little flap of skin here that can catch in the clipper. So I take my full width of the clipper across that. And what I mean by that taking my full width of the clipper across that is, okay, see this little flap here? The light better. So right here, you have this flap, right? You can see how that could feed into a clipper blade, especially using something like a 15. See the teeth? If you took it wrong and you took it at an angle, you're gonna catch those flaps and slice the dog open. You don't wanna slice the dog open. I know you don't. Nobody wants to slice the dog open. I hate to put it so bluntly, but it's true. Okay, so when I do this, I'm keeping the ear flat and I'm taking the full width of the blade over this instead of coming up in. See how that could catch or using the edge of the blade right here. See how that could catch? So you're taking your whole width of your blade over that entire area, and that's preventing you from using the edge of the blade to cut the ear. He's like, what? So now you can see this veil working when his hair falls forward. So it looked like I trimmed out quite a bit. But when his hair falls forward, that's when his face disappears. And by using the thinning shears, now as his hair is falling forward naturally, we actually see the veil. And that, that's what I was hoping would happen. When it's all pushed back, it looks like it's trimmed a little bit too much. But his hair, this whole area from here forward, tends to grow forward this whole thing will just drop down. Right? Right? Now we're gonna go over the whole edge of those ears and from the top third up with a 40 blade. Did I say 30? I meant 40, if I said 30. With a 40 blade. Right here. This 
So now you'll see me take this full width of the blade across here. Center out, center out, center up, center out. So again, when I'm talking about this roll here, right on the front of the ear, it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but you have this whole section of, of skin that is literally rolled backwards. You take your fingers on the inside, push it up and out, put your thumb up over it and flatten it. And don't let them turn their head to make it roll back out again. So you're ready. That area is a common area to nick or cut. So here's the roll, flattening it. Getting my clipper up in there flat. Center out, center up. Center out, center out. You're all right. Down. Stay. On the back side of this ear, where that, where the notch is here on this inside of the ear, you have the same thing on the back side of the ear. So if you look at this, see this whole little flap? You look right here, see that notch? You can catch that too. Very, very easily. So when you're coming from the back side of the ear, you're paying just as much attention as the inside. You're taking your whole blade width across that whole flap region. Paying very close attention. And if you're a groomer who is in a busy shop where a dog's head can whip around or you're distracted a lot, when you're working in these areas, please pay very, very close attention because one time flipping your eyes upward to look at something or one whipping around of the dog's head can be a problem. So now when I go to scissor the edges, I'm flipping that back forward again, using my fingers to push it up and out, bracing it, and I'm laying my scissors. I can't see with this phone. Uh -huh. Yeah, my phone wants to fall. Excuse me, guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm laying my scissors on my finger, holding the ear firmly, but not so much to upset the dog. And see how my scissors are just going right up my fingers? So I just noticed he had hair in his ears that was ready to come out because of its color. So when I know ear hair is ready to come out, it changes its look. And this piece here has a different look, which means it's in the exogen phase and ready to come out. Right? All right. Finish edging this ear. And I like to use a 40 on the edges of the ears because it gets it right up close and then there's very little left to scissor off. But I never not scissor the edge of the ears. I like a really, really clean ear. I like it to look fabulous. All right. 
boy. Let's get out of this hair. I shave a little bit more so you notice how I keep letting my blades have a cool down period you also notice I don't use cool lube or any kind of blade coolant when I am working ever because I don't like to saturate my blades in something to keep clipping because I don't want that whatever it is I'm saturating the blades with on the dog's skin. So I'd rather time my work in an effort to give my blades a plenty of a cool down period. All right, should I fix that camera? Kind of like the angle it's at, I'll leave it. Could raise you guys up though, stay. Now I'm gonna go back over the face with the 40 blade. Mostly from the corner of the eye to the corner of the lip forward and the under jaw, not back here. So you noticed I washed them in an antibacterial shampoo prior to the bath. This breed is prone to blackheads. And after the bath, they tend to lift out more than they are preceding the bath. It's very common in this breed. So that's why I use that shampoo. Not to treat him for anything, just to use the best shampoo for him. I also want the skin super sanitized before you go over it with a blade this close because you don't want any, it's just like when you have surgery and they have you use like a chlorhexidine shampoo prior to the surgery. Same thing, when you're going this close, you just want any bacteria that might be naturally on the skin gone. All right, we're getting there. Just checking all the clipped stuff. Okay. Who knew a hairless dog needed so much work, right? 
You gotta see all the trimming done on Dobermans. Did you know Dobermans get a lot of trimming? They get all their cowlicks flattened out. They get their whiskers done. They get their little pants here all smoothed out. Beagles, too. Beagles, show beagles, get a lot of work done on their tail. And they get their faces shaved with a tin blade. And then they get their cowlicks smoothed from the tin blade back. And they get a very velvety appearance. Really, in, in anywhere that you have cowlicks and you've got hair growing out, you trim those really good on beagles. All right, now we're going back to the thinning shears. And he's got a lot, a lot of mane. And if he were being shown, it's hiding his shoulders and it's too much. So while it's very, very pretty, it's hiding the dog. So basically what I wanna do is angle him back looking very, very natural to the point where I can see his shoulders. So I'm gonna start, and I'm using thinning shears, not blending shears, with teeth on both sides. So I'm gonna start just skimming down through here, skimming it off, just a little at a time. so that we end up with a really natural appearance. And again, if you were actively showing or campaigning a dog, you would want to do this every time you gave the dog a bath. You're picking over it so that it's not all done at once. Because when it's all done at once, you can't help but get somewhat of a clipped look or a scissored look. It's really hard to get it super natural. So a couple of swipes a week, if you're actively showing a dog, will um, keep your dog looking super, super natural. Not super natural. Well, you, kind of, you might want him looking super natural if, <laughs> if he's showing, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I got a supernatural dog. I'm wanting to show off his front angle on his shoulder here. So this has got to go. Now this looks too thick as a result. So I'm gonna come up under and just a couple little swipes. There we go. That's looking better. foot sticking out too much and that's why I kind of like when I'm doing something a little more natural 
I want to piece it together so I can keep going back and just picking over it. All right, so we still have a problem here. If you come up close on his hair, you can see he's a bit prickly. If you run your hands over him, he's prickly. And you can kind of see his hair growing through. We don't want that. So let me put him down for a second and clean off my table. He still has too much mane looking down on him, so I've got more work to do there. Be good over there. The way his hair grows, it drops forward when he's moving, and it doesn't do him justice. Wait a minute, bud. So now we're bringing out the handy dandy brawn. You can't groom one of these dogs without it. Come here, bud. Come here. Oh, what are you doing? Come on, let's go. Hope your neighbor's okay, Shelly. So now we're going to take the brawn. 
over all the areas we did with the 40 blade. And we're going to get rid of the stubble. Oh yeah. Make them smooth. Get rid of this five o'clock shadow. Just like with the clippers, you got to stretch out these areas where there's boning areas. And if I were showing a dog, I would do this. Um, I would do it the day before a show, the day of a show, just before I go in the ring. Like again and again. And don't forget to get up under the mane, up into the shoulders, because the judge is going to lift up that hair. And if you've left stubble up in there, he's going to see it. So get it all the way up to the hairline. As I said earlier, this breed has extremely thick skin, so it's not like doing this to a Maltese. Lower you guys down here. It's a completely different animal. It. Stretch that back leg back. He's like, oh yeah, that feels so good. Good boy.
there was something in here I wasn't liking when he was on the floor with his mane. It's hard to tell. You stand. Real stand. So he puts his head right about here when he's moving comfortably. This becomes heavy right in here. Now we're starting to see his shoulder. See that? So this is showing. Still got too much thickness right there. starting to look quite natural, isn't it? <sighs> Good boy. You're so sweet. That's not the way to turn, dude. Stop it. Just stop it. Jeez. Jeez, Louise. Such a good boy. This. Right here. This. I like to see what it's doing when he drops his head. And that's looking pretty. His tail is curly and I don't like that, so I'm going to fix that real quick.
everybody. Can you give me a five? I'll shake your hand. I'll shake your hand. Yes. So now that the hair is turned away from his feet, I'm going to go ahead and file his nails. Because with him trimmed this short, definitely don't want him scratching himself. Good boy. Good boy. Uh -uh. You're fine. Get a grip, Rio. You're fine. Good boy. Good boy. Do the back feet. Good boy. Okay. Greta, if you're close by, he'll be ready in a few minutes. If you'd like to head back. He's feeling silky smooth.
you looking like? Turn. Turn, 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 turn. Oh, you don't like turning. You don't like turning. Now, this way, we need to look at this side. I am going to log off for tonight. Thanks for hanging out with me while I'm working on this handsome dude. Let's see if we can get him to put his ears up. There we go. Stay. What is it? Huh? What is that thing? Say good night, Rio. Tell everybody you'll see them next time. Yeah. Like this one? <laughs> He's so cute. Yeah, you like it? Oh, what is it? <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time. See you tomorrow. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye.